So welcome, thank you very much for doing this interview. Appreciate oh, no it. No problem. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing here at the con? Sure. Uh, my name is Savin Panichpong, and I'm actually the owner of Collector's Anime. Uh, some of the stuff we specialize in selling is actually uh, Blu-rays, DVDs, also import merchandise from Japan, figures, and also one of the uh, trading card games that's uh, starting to gain popularity called Y Schwartz, which is based on a lot of uh, anime properties. Cool. Uh, what's some of the most interesting stuff here that you've seen sell well? Uh, actually, it's uh, surprisingly, it's actually been like uh, the Y Schwartz trading card game, uh, some figures, and you know, I, a good amount. Of, I mean, just a little bit of everything. Uh, this small merchandise, especially, I noticed uh, from what my uh, staff members have been telling me, have been moving quite well. Because usually what we try to do is try to keep up with uh, trends, you know, to see what is it that, you know, that people like currently, what is very popular right now, and, you know, and, you know, just uh, try to keep up with those trends. So, cool. Yeah. Tell us a bit more about Y Schwartz, how that works. Y Schwartz is a trading card game uh, that uh, was created by Bushi Road. Now, the, uh, the trading card game itself, uh, there's a lot of different anime properties that are existing right now. The newest being... Uh, uh, that was just released as Malakali Haruhi Suzumiya. There's also like a lot of proper uh, properties or uh, popular titles right now that have uh, theme decks and booster packs and things like that, such as Attack on Titan, Love Life School Isle Project, uh, Sword Art Online, um, and and there's many more to come. And Bushi Road continues to just uh, is really starting to gain a lot of popularity with their card games here in the U.S. And you'll probably be hearing like more often from them like. Uh, releases almost on a monthly basis throughout this year, especially. That's great. I know one of the, the uh, there's so many of those card games in Japan. Yeah. Um, and I know you know yeah, Pokemon's done well, Yu-Gi-Oh's done well, some of the others haven't really done well uh, as well. Um, why do you think Y Schwartz is starting to hit now? I think I think the thing that uh, Y Schwartz has going for it is because that it's very easy to to market and cater to the anime fans especially if it's available in english i know that like especially in the west coast right now it's a very popular game there's regional tournaments that go on like in california and i think now it's spreading out here to the east coast with new york and i think recently atlanta uh, having regional tournaments so i think the fact that like it really does cater specific you know to anime fans especially if it's a popular series that's why i think more players are getting into it yeah. That's very cool. So what are some of the trends you've seen over the years in anime merchandise? What are some of the, um, the big things you've seen change? Um, let me see. Well, I think uh, as far as uh, when it comes to Blu-rays and DVDs, I think like, uh, fans now, like uh, when they see a series that they do like, say like they've watched it on Crunchyroll, Funimation.com, Hulu, or you know any of the streaming sites, one thing that seems to go over well with fans is notably uh, if it's a, if there's a collector's edition or limited edition available, because uh, it's something about like uh, you like the series, but at the same time, like uh, if you can get something that's like in like a limited edition item that's you know say I am a collector, I love the series, I want you know I want like with all the great extra stuff, you know that you know you normally can't get when you just buy just a DVD or Blu-ray by itself. I think collector's editions are one thing that has been you know really interesting, like uh, that fans have been clamoring for, especially like with like uh, how, for example, Anaplex is doing it, NIS America is doing it, and now you're even seeing even more like Sentai Filmworks is starting to do collector's editions for very popular series, such as uh, No Game, No Life, uh, Beyond the Boundary, and I think they actually have a uh, collector's edition coming up for A Comic Got Kill, which is on Toonami right now. Nice. So let's talk about this, that a bit, because I, I know there's some back and forth within the, the within fandom about those expensive collector's editions. And, right. Um, uh, do you see those, are those selling well for you? Um, and, and do you see those selling well in other, for other vendors as well? I do. Um, and again, I think it's because uh, if it's, you know, is, if it's a, a particular property that's, uh, that is, has uh, a lot of uh, positive reaction among fans, they want it, they, they, they definitely want to own the series, but just the fact that they're giving them like a collector's edition with like a really nice art box, you know, that holds you know, all their nice extra items in it. Because I think, like, for example, like, uh, I I think Beyond the Boundary, like, uh, they gave, like, a uh, couple accessories, you know, and I think there's a soundtrack, if I'm not mistaken. You know, just a lot of great stuff that really makes, you know, the price point at first, you know, may catch some people off guard, but when they look at it, they realize, you know what, I'm getting a lot, a great value out of this, and this is something that they're only making a certain number of, and I may never be able to get it again. Do you see the American industry moving closer to that Japanese model where there are a lot more limited edition releases and that seems to be more the, 
um, where a lot of the money is made as opposed to the um, less expensive DVD sales? It's hard to say right now because uh, it, I think it depends on what type of uh, what type of consumer, like t what type of anime fan you're talking about. Yeah. Because I mean, if if it's uh, someone you know who, let's just say that like uh, there are some people like uh, who are willing to spend a lot of money to get those limited edition box sets and things like that. Um, and yeah, you mentioned the Japanese model, like uh, where you notice that like in, in many cases, like some epi uh, episode counts can only be like two or three per set. Yeah. But I think what they tend to do sometimes is for certain series, they'll make it worth your while to pay that much because they'll usually either include a limited edition item or there's something that you can get if you buy the entire series, for example, to make the cost of it. When it comes to the US, I think um, it's hard to say right now because I think uh, right now the way the spread is with standard editions and collector's editions, it actually allows you to be able to kind of reach, you know, all I think about most of the uh, broad range of fans, because there's some that like I I mean I would love to own the show, but I, I, you know I can't really justify like saying paying a hundred dollars for a series. But you know if I can just get the standard edition, hey I own the series, you know it's great. I you know I like the series and I, I want to you know own a physical copy for myself. Exactly, that makes sense. So what are some of the other things you do at conventions? You mentioned you have some panels coming up. Yes, actually, uh, me, me and also uh, some of my staffers, uh, we actually are going to be at Katsukon, not as vendors, but we usually go, you know, as a group of friends, just have a good time at Katsukon. And actually, my other job uh, in the industry is uh, I actually do press uh, for the Fandom Post. Uh, we do, uh, I actually do some of the live streaming for the industry panel, so kind of bringing some of the news to fans who can't make it, so they want to know what the, what the latest is coming from each of the companies. And then, like, uh, we do, like, uh, fan panels. Uh, I know some of my guys uh, have ones uh, coming up for some very popular series. And then, like, I actually do um, one uh, that's about being an anime vendor. Oh, cool. Interesting. Can you just preview of kind of what you're going to cover? Um, so, yeah. I mean, basically, I, I know in the past that when I've had people attend the panel for uh, being an anime vendor, I've actually had people ask me a lot of questions about what does it take to get started as an anime, you know, in this business and everything. And I mean, one one piece of information I can give already is that it for me it took me probably about uh, several months to almost a year of planning because it's a lot of research to make sure you do everything by the book, especially by according to your state laws and you know and even like even down to like the county level wow. to make sure you do everything correctly. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Um, anything in the booth that you want to particularly um, uh, you know, highlight? Well, um, let me see. Yeah, like I said, we do like uh, Blu-rays and DVDs. Mm -hmm. oh. So back here is. Uh, oh, nice. The Y Schwartz. The Y Schwartz. Nice. And then if you want to look over, if you look over, we also mm -hmm. have uh, some like the small merchandise, lo low collectible merchandise, such as uh, we have like uh, mini posters, art boards, also like uh, the little cell phone charms. You know, just like a, uh, like things are like people. We'll probably want to either like you know for practical use or you know just something you know, just something collectible for themselves. And also we have our figures as well for people who are big figure Ooh, collectors. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we try to you know we try to get uh, you know a good variety of figures like from different series, especially like the the more recent ones uh, that, that people are looking for. So, but yeah, this is uh, this is us, and um, yeah, and we're glad to be here. Cool. And I'm. Um, we're starting to put together like more of our schedule for this year, so I'm I'm hoping that like uh, anyone who's you know who's been able to visit us, or if they can't make out this weekend, hopefully we'll be able to see them at uh, future conventions in the area in the future. Awesome. Look forward. To Thank you so much for doing the interview. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you. So this is like if you're looking from here to here, this is actually what uh, yeah, I'll take an example there. So like NIS America has actually been doing this uh, has been doing the style of uh, art boxes for a while. Now they've recently shifted to kind of like the smaller ones that uh, I can actually show you here in a second. But this is uh, one of the uh, what, this is what uh, NIS America had, had started initially with with their box sets. And the nice thing is that I mean it's very nice art you know on both sides. Also it comes with a book in there and the disc itself. This is, um, and kind of going over to here now. This is a company that actually started operations in the U.S. last year. It's actually Pony Canyon. They started a U.S. division, and you can kind of tell that like it's actually a slipcase and uh, somewhat slightly uh, similar style. But in, and you can see that um, it's a slipcase, uh, and so they usually uh, try to put uh, I think uh, I believe a pencil board size uh, art card and also a soundtrack in these. So as part of the releases, this is actually uh, one of Pony Canyon's uh, popular titles right now. 
uh, Yuki Yuna is a hero, and so, um, yeah, this is the collector's edition. As far as uh, I know currently, they do not do standard editions yet, so, but, uh, I mean, I think some fans have been asking for standard editions of some of their titles, so. And actually, I can show you also, um, now, it, this one can vary a little bit, because with, um, now this is, these are actually two of Funimation's titles, Darken and Black and Soul Eater. They decided to do these yearbook style uh, ones for these two particular releases, but, the, uh, the collector's editions for Funimations uh, can kind of vary because there's also um, another example I can show you is uh, Black Lagoon, if you want to come this way. And I actually, I particularly like this one. So Black Lagoon, if you know what the show's about, you'll get this. This is actually like an ammo box style uh, box set for uh, Black Lagoon. So I actually like how they did this. It's a very, you know, it's a very smart way to uh, kind of promote the show. So. And finally, as I mentioned before, <laughs> this is actually kind of like the new style that um, that uh, NIS America has been doing for their art box uh, box sets. As you can see, very nice, you know, very nice art box, you know, thick, uh, thick and sturdy. And you can see here, here are your desk, here's the art book again, and also this one, they, they actually packed a soundtrack in here as well. So. But yeah, I mean, it's, I think of the style boxes, so, you know, are vary by what the company decides to do. And I, uh, actually, there's one more example I can give you. Kind of, kind of similar to how, like, you just saw a little bit ago. This is uh, by Sentai Filmworks. Uh, they've actually been doing this a lot recently with uh, some of their popular titles. Beyond the Boundary being one of them. No Game, No Life. Uh, Chunibyo. Uh, love, uh, you'll love Chunibyo and Delusion, and other Delusions. And I believe they are doing this style of an art box for Akami Got Kill and Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun, which should be coming out later this year. So, and I think these are what are, are really getting people's attention because they see how nice the art box is. And also the fact that it's a, if you look on the side, I mean, you're getting a lot of stuff in here for what you're paying for. So I think that's, you know, it's a great move on like these companies' parts is that you know that you're getting, you know, you know what you're getting what, worth what you're paying for. All those extras, uh, people really enjoy those. I think it keeps hard copies uh, heads heads and shoulders above uh, streaming media. I think so. I think that I think you know you you make a very good point that I think that's like there's people you know if they want they they watch the shows they can watch it like on Crunchyroll, Hulu, uh, Netflix, um, Funimation.com, and you know and Daisuke even like. But if they, you know, they're, they are collectors, they want to own the show, these collector's editions for like, especially popular shows are great things to, you know, to get.